I've been an IV drug user for probably about nine years. God, that sucks, doesn't it? Oh, my God. It was awful. To be honest with you, I almost lost both of my arms from IV drug use. I don't know what it was. I wasn't missing, but some people have this bacteria that's already in their body that doesn't counteract well with whatever you're putting in it. So to literally eat, like, eat your flesh. It's crazy. Okay. You want to see a scar? Please. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back, and today we speak with Brittany Ellen. So Brittany lived on the streets of Baltimore in her car and panhandled for money in order to obtain drugs for a while. She moved on from that life and ended up living with another guy where they were both working and doing their thing, but they were using on a daily basis. She comes home one day and finds out that he isn't alive anymore. This sends Brittany into a spiral where she starts using a lot more than she was then. She just wanted to numb the pain. Um, things finally come to a head. She catches some charges. She's facing about 10 years right now in jail, but she has four months clean. She is straightening her life up and uh, rebuilding relationships with her family, her mother, her kids. So uh, this video is about the struggle of drugs, man, and what it takes to get out. And sometimes the consequences are severe. And uh, her story, man, hits in a different way. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chopping It Up. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh. Hey, how come you ain't gonna be in like the video? I am gonna be in the video. What? Just not your face? No, all of me. Right now. Oh, I get it. Yes. I see. I yeah, see. Yeah. We got I see two what views. you're doing. We got two views going on. Yeah. So welcome. Hi. What do you think? It's great. Pretty cool. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Outstanding. Yeah. So introduce yourself, man. Tell us a little bit about you, Brittany. Oh God, my name's Brittany. Uh. I don't know. What do you want to know? I mean, where did you grow up? Where are you from? Um, How old are you? I'm 30. My birthday is May 25th, so I'll be 31 in a month. I grew up in West Virginia, but I hate West Virginia, so I moved around a lot. Okay. Lived in Ohio, Virginia, uh, North Carolina for a little bit, but yeah. So bounced around all over the place. Right, yeah. So you think that played into your addiction? Mm, maybe, possibly, right. yeah. I mean, they say to change the people, places, and things, but if you want it, you're going to find it no matter where you go. So No matter how far I run, I'm always there. Yeah, right. right. You can't run fast enough to outrun yourself. Exactly. So you said you've been clean for a while. How long have you been clean? Four months. Four months. Yeah. That's that smile, dude. Yeah, dude. That feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. It's good, man. It's uh, You wake up different every day. Yeah. Like instead you of grateful, right? Yeah. Instead of where's my whatever, right? It's just like, yo, let me get a cup of coffee and maybe pull right. out my phone. Yeah, dude, it's so much better. It's crazy. It is. And maybe talk to my son. You know. Okay. Just, yeah. So you hadn't talked to him when you was out there? Oh no, I stayed as far away as possible right. from my entire family. Right, because we hide. Right. We're ashamed. Right. Just talked to a girl this morning that uh, kicked crazy gas station heroin. But, dude, that stuff's vicious. Like, you wouldn't even believe how vicious those little pills are that they sell oh, the in caps? these head shops. Or and gas not, station here. When yeah, but it's not Kratom. kratom? It's called Tenactopine or some shit dude, like that. what? So now they're making it illegal. But, yeah, it's like, it's really crazy, man. I didn't even know that was a thing. Exactly. Me neither until That's she crazy. told me. And I was like, are you shitting me? Do you do it? Like, I don't even want to know. Yeah, right. You definitely don't. Well, they're yeah, making it illegal know. anyways. It's getting ready to be gone. Good. But anyway, she just messaged me this morning with like four days clean from that. She got off it with Suboxone. Yeah. You know what I mean? All that right there. So it's great to well, hear from good. people that's feeling good. Right. Because she's like, I feel so much better. She's still a little bit in her head. Yeah. Well, that's you know? to be expected. It takes a minute, doesn't it? Yeah. It so does. what did you like using? What was your? Heroin. Okay. And methamphetamine. So you like bouncing off each other. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It was fun when I did it, but not now. When did you start using? When I was 21 years old. Not till 21, huh? Right. So how about school? I went to college a little bit, but I dropped out, obviously, because uh -huh. I couldn't finish. But but I'm enrolled to get back into college for the summer classes this summer. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Yeah. You feel like you want to do things like that now that you didn't want to do when you're using? Yeah. Right, because all it was was work. Well, it's not that I didn't want to do it while I was using. I just knew there was no mm -hmm. point because I'm not going to finish it. Mm -hmm. You just don't ever finish. I, I never finished anything, ever. Just, I didn't even care to. Yeah. Right. Just survived every day. Right. Right. How'd you like using? Uh, thought it was great when I was using until I 
you know, hit rock bottom and, you know, seen snorting. the dirty side of the world, you know what I mean? Right, snorting, shooting. Shooting. Yeah, that's the worst of the worst, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So did it just start at shooting or did you oh, like... Oh, no, I started right. out snorting, but it, maybe six months I was shooting. Mm -hmm. So I've been an IV drug user for probably about nine years. God, it sucks, doesn't it? Oh, my God, it was awful. And you're scared, like, how about when you go to the doctor for blood tests or anything like that? Have you been doing any of that yet? Oh, yeah. Why? Well, I, to be honest with you, I almost lost both of my arms from IV drug use. No shit. Yeah. Explain. Uh, I don't know what it was. I wasn't missing, but some people have this bacteria that's already in their body that doesn't counteract well with whatever you're putting in it. So it'll literally eat, like, eat your fucking flesh. It's crazy. Okay. You want to see the scar? Please. Okay. <laughs> so this was just straight. What drug was this? That, that's doing Fentanyl this to you. Fentanyl or heroin. Okay. Oh shit. Okay, so th there was none of that was mixed with, like, trank or any of that stuff. Oh, I've I'm been sure. I have no idea. Right. I mean, who really knows? You know. But. Right. So when it was open like that, it was it was taking a while to heal, right? I've seen some wounds uh, like that. That, take that took. I mean, I was hospitalized probably about four or five times for it. And each time I was hospitalized, I was in the hospital for about five to seven days. And you're still using through all that? Oh, yeah. As soon as you get out of the hospital? Oh, yeah. Sometimes while I was in the hospital. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I, I did one recently where I talked about something like this, and I was like, man, if my arms started, my body started falling apart, I would quit. So You'd think, right? God, it just keeps you going, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. I got arrested in Baltimore, and the jail wouldn't take me because they said I was a liability because of my arms, so the cop took me to the hospital. And the nurse said she was like, you should be a poster child for addiction because if you can allow your body to get that bad, there's a fucking problem. How'd that make you feel? At the time, I mean, it was what I was. It was what it was. Right, I didn't stay right. in the hospital. I left. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So. Damn, that sucks, man. And it just keeps your fucking brain so that you're eating your body alive. Yeah. And after it gets so bad, you're kind of like, fuck it. Why, you know? Right? So that you got a case of the fuckets, huh? Oh, a huge case of the fuckets. It's like, if I put this in my arm this time and don't wake up, I don't even care. Right, yeah. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Been there. I took like 56, 10 milligram methadone one time. Oh, God, I hate methadone. Yeah. So how'd mm -hmm. you come off of everything? You didn't use anything to come off? Just cold turkey? No, I got arrested and went to jail. They tried giving me the Subutex for like a day, and it did not help my withdrawals. So I said I don't want it, and then I just kicked in jail. What'd you get arrested for? Uh, when I got arrested, I had like four capuses for like simple possessions, but the big one that I got arrested for was shoplifting third. Mm. Yeah. Shoplifting to get more? No, just to uh, do it. Just shoplifting. I don't know why. Whatever the hell you needed. Right. High in your mind though, don't right. even think about it. Yeah. I got caught stealing out of Kohl's one time. I went in and put the shoes on my feet and right. literally forgot that I had the new shoes on my feet. Stole other stuff. Did so you I, forget or did you? I just really say you did forgot. forget because I was on Xanaxes. Oh well, and I, I legit get it then. did. I, I get left it. it. It was it was terrible, bro. And it was like I was so confused when I come out of that Xanax trance. Right. You know? Like what happened? <laughs> I remember, but I, like I had the money for the shoes and everything, dude. I legit right. wanted to pay for them, man. I, I and I forgot the box because I was I was just so high. Right. So yeah, coming out of that. So you wake up in jail and you're you're feeling rough, right? How's that Not process? real bad. See, I got charged with trying to bring stuff into the jail because what I had had busted open in my bra. And, well, to be honest with you, I was in the back of the cop car and I made sure I'd, I made sure they handcuffed me up front so I could get whatever was out of my bra and do it before I went into jail. So I was good for like a day, day and okay. a half. Yeah. But they still found some of it on you. Yeah, because it busted in my bra. And they threw a fit man they were like that could kill everybody in here i'm like simmer down <laughs> because it was fitting all right, right? Yeah. yeah and they're, they're scared to breathe look at right. touch get close to yeah which is a good thing too though right yeah, yeah. be I scared mean, of it right i mean yeah I reasonably so yeah yeah so uh do you want to talk about james if you want to tell me it's about easier to talk there. about now I bet it is, man. Yeah, and when it first happened, I couldn't talk about it at all. To be so, with just you. a little context. This is how we met. It was mm -hmm. through James, right? Yeah. Me and James worked together for a little while. We actually used together. 
and then somehow I met you. I think one day maybe I hooked up with him. You was there, but then when he passed is right. when we connected through tattooing, right? Right. So take me through that day, man. Like, what was that day? How was that? How did that oh, day work? Well, let me start the day before because me and James were on Suboxone. And, you know, we were good. Everything was good. We were able to live our lives. Um, I had my son back in our lives. And uh, the day before, we decided that we wanted to get a couple caps of dope. Because, you know what I mean? Like, just to get high once right. and then get back on sub. I got us the caps. And then the next day, well, that night he went to work. He came back home the next morning. And when he got home, I was taking my son Landon to his aunt's house. Right. And he got off early didn't he because he worked a night shift yeah but i mean he would get in order to get home to wardensville he'd probably go home around 10 10 30 okay yeah so it's in the morning though yeah yeah so he gets home and i get landon ready to go to his aunt's house uh whenever i left he said that he was going to get ready to sand down the bumper for my car uh everything was fine so i left i took landon to his aunt's and i really didn't think i was gone that long but Thinking back on it, I dropped Landon off, and then I stopped at the store to get scratch-offs because me and Jimmy love scratch-offs, and then I came back home. And then, I don't know, I don't know if it's intuition or I don't know what it is, but as soon as I pulled in and didn't seem outside, my gut sank, you know what I mean? So I went in, I was yelling for him, bathroom door was locked, so I tried, I had to... I tried kicking the fucking bathroom door open, but that motherfucker swung out. Not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. so I had to pick the lock. Finally got it open. He's sitting on the toilet, of course, with his head back. So I drag him so I can start CPR and call 911. And when I breathed into him, he gurgled back at me. So. I mean, I I knew I still tried, but I knew, and that back then is Narcan wasn't as like readily available as it is now, so I didn't have any of that. The cops got there, they Narcaned him once, uh, waited I don't know how long, Narcaned him again, and then the cop asked the other cop, "Well, should we Narcan him again?" I was like, "Fuck yeah, Narcan him again! Oh, yeah, like, what's it gonna hurt? Like, keep Narcaning him! Like, yeah. I don't know what the fuck." Then the EMTs got there, and that's when COVID was a big thing, so they didn't really even want to come in to do anything. They just, one of the EMTs came in and started breathing with the bag, and I was standing outside. My mom showed up. She's screaming, drugs, it's always drugs. I mean, it was a shit show. But then the EMT came up to me, because I knew him personally, and he said, I'm sorry, Brittany, we did everything we could. God. Yeah. It was awful. Fucking awful. Yeah, man, that's terrible shit. And until you deal with death that closely of somebody that you love or, like, somebody that's that close to you, like, I have no way of explaining it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, my grandmother's passed. People's have, people have passed. My friends have passed. But, like, Somebody you're that close with every day, it just rocks your whole world. Sent me spiraling, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, my uh, baby's mother died while I was in prison. I still had like four years left. Oh, fuck that. So, yeah, it was nightmares five days a week. Yeah. No, it was fucking horrible. Yeah. Can't stop thinking about it. Can't stop dreaming about it. Right. Right. So, how did using go from there? Like, oh, it escalated quickly went even worse yeah yeah i actually the emts the cops everybody was still there and i was like i asked one of the officers i was like can i please leave and she said yeah so i had her hand me my purse thank god she didn't search it i grabbed my purse and left and went to the closest place i knew i could get high at <sighs> yeah. they probably could have searched everything right there and oh yeah easily yeah and if you'd have died, they would have wished they did. Right. Yeah. But. So straight from there to get high, man. Yeah, immediately. Just make me feel better To be right honest now. with you, that's all I wanted. How crazy is it that you sit and watch someone die from what you're getting ready to put in your arm, though, right? 
looking back on it, yeah. It is, man, and it's hard to see that in the moment. Yeah, it's impossible to see that in the moment. You hear someone dies from it, and you want to go get that dope. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. Our fucking Insanity. Brains it is, dude. It's crazy how our brains work. Yeah. I look back at some of the stuff I've done like that, and it's like, what the fuck was I thinking? Right. Like, I, I wasn't thinking or something. Couldn't have been. Oh. <sighs> So you're going through it at this point, man, like, you find him there, like, God yeah. almighty, this, this, that shit just stays in your head, too, huh? Oh, my God, like, no other, like, no other. Do you think talking about it helps? Now, uh, a little bit, but there for a while, I couldn't talk about it real well. How long has it been? Uh, it's, it's been about four years. Has it been that long? Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. I was Crazy, not, right? I was thinking. He died in like, 2020. Oh, yeah. April 7th, 2020. So that was when uh, when COVID hit. Mm-hmm. I overdosed on fentanyl. Ended up in jail. Lost my job working with James. Yeah. Because we worked there together. I was in for two weeks. Got out on the violation. Uh, did two weeks for the probation violation. But when I got out is when Buddy told me that James hadn't been to work in two days Mm because I was trying to get my job back. He's like, James ain't been in for two days. Third day means whatever. Right. And I think on the third day is when I found out from you or someone, someone had told me about that. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, bro. I don't even want that job now. Right. Bro, I feel like like I was – that was just – I felt like shit, and I didn't even do anything. Yeah. So, God, I can't even imagine what you went through. Y'all were tight. Y'all were close, man. Yeah. He right? moved How long back were y'all from together? Ohio. Uh, probably about three and a half years. He right. moved back from Ohio with me. I remember that part, too. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. What, it really affected my son, though, because my son got real close to him. And I actually, him. after I got arrested this last time and got into rehab, uh, I went on a weekend pass with my mom and my son, and I swear to God, the very first question my son asked me was, if Jimmy was still alive, what would you say to him? Hmm. Yeah. How did that hit you? Hard. What would you say to him? That I loved him and I missed him, and that I wish he was still here. God, right? Yeah. So you think about the life you could have had clean. Right, yeah. Fuck yeah. 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 Hmm. But. Well, 30 years old, man, you're doing, you know, I think, like, just stay where you're at, you know? I'm trying. Yeah, dude, it's tough, right? Yeah. So what do you do now? Like, you get that call still? You get that heroin call? The heroin's there? Or that fit no. all? Mm-mm. It's like, come and see me. Come put me in your To be arm. honest with you, I haven't really thought about it. That's but good. But I try to stay busy to where I don't. Right. I don't give myself enough time to. Right. And to be honest with you, I ruined my fucking life because of it. I've. I don't know. I mean, I know everybody has their own shit, but I don't ever want to go back to where the places that that took me. Mm-hmm. I just don't want to do it. So tell me one of these shitty situations. Like, how are you getting your dope? Or is it just like, do you have a rage or connect? Are you going into the city and just finding somebody that's selling? Well, when I first started doing heroin, uh, we would go into Baltimore and get it. And finally, we got tired of driving back and forth from West Virginia to Baltimore. So we just started sleeping in my car in Baltimore. So until we got arrested. And then, so I say we probably slept in my car for about mm, five months, maybe, in Baltimore. You mm. know how hard it is to sleep in your car in Baltimore? No they, shit. Yeah, they do not. Yeah. You and Jimmy together? No, not me and Jimmy. Okay. My other ex. Okay, so this, this is was before. before I even met Jimmy. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow, what year do you think that was? So this was heroin days, though, before Heroin, fentanyl? like, yeah, right. the heroin, the vinegary heroin. The real shit. Yeah. Before they started crazying it up. Like right. Do now. Yeah. So you just lived in your car for five months chasing every day. What was you doing to get money? Panhandling. No shit. Mm-hmm. He would always make me panhandle, because obviously women probably give right. money. Of course. Right. How much would you make a day? Oh, I'd kill it. My accent and in the city, and I'm like a small woman, and I'd kill it. At least 100, 150 a day. No less than. How long would it take? Not long. Not Mm. long at all. And I had a vehicle, so I would like, we'd go up to like a gas station, and I'd be like, I'm out of gas. I'm just trying to get back home to West Virginia. Can y'all please help me? Like, yeah. 
Hmm. Manipulation. Right. You become good at it, though. Oh, yeah. Real good. I was good at it, too. Yeah. I talk you out of anything. Oh, yeah. And think I'm doing you a favor. Right. And make you think I'm doing a right, favor yeah, for you. By yeah. the time I leave, you just helped me and I helped you. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> it is, man. It is. Do you still find those, some of those behaviors that come out now? Oh, like, absolutely. Right. What do you absolutely. do about that? I try to be aware of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's man. hard. You it know, is them sometimes. character defects, you know, they're hard to uh work through. I think that's the shit we need to work on the most once we get clean. Oh, absolutely. Because you can get straight and still be a piece of shit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Most people that clean get clean art. <laughs> to be honest with yeah, you. you. I mean they just I don't know. You can be. Yeah. You can be. A lot I, of people forget where they came from, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Yeah, then they look down on you. Is that right, kind of what you yeah, mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh Talking to so many people about this that I have been, it just makes you relate more. Right. Even if your story is totally different and your drug of choice is totally different, I can relate on ways because I've been through all that shit. Right. So it's like for me to ever be able to look back at someone and be like, oh, you're a scumbag for you. What? Right. What? It's crazy. It is, man. Yeah. So what are you doing now? Working now? Like, how's life today? Well, I think I got a job. Okay. At the kennel in Wardensville, which I'll be taking care of, like, horses and dogs. So that's what's up, because I hate people. Uh, I go to day report every week, get drug tested three times a week. So how's that working? That's with the court thing, right? Right, so yeah. So what are you charged with right now? How many charges? Oh, uh, okay, so there's four possession of methamphetamines, three possession of fentanyls, two obstruction charges, and the shoplifting third. Because I had four capuses, so... Mm -hmm. I just never went to court. So all this stuff is put into one case right now? Uh, I think that's what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to dismiss all the misdemeanors and charge me with the felony. So how is is this like a drug court thing you're doing? Uh, it's a little similar, but no. Does it benefit your sentencing? It better. It better, right? Right, yeah. I better not be doing all this for nothing. But uh, it's not for nothing, though, dude. You're clean. Well, yeah, right? I know. So but I just like, want, I, just I don't, don't want to do all this and right. then go to, you know, I understand. Jail for I just want to correct it in your head. No matter if you go to jail or not, being clean is what's important. Right. Right. You got to know that. Yeah, you know, I know just like that. me and you were talking before this started, like we got clean because of fucking the consequences of jail, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You got to take advantage. Right. So what are you looking at? Like, what are they telling you? What's your lawyer saying? My lawyer is a court appointed lawyer and he's not very good, but. I'm assuming that I'm just looking at the one to ten for the shoplifting third. Hmm. I'm hoping. Oh, it's a big gap though. One to ten. Yeah, I know. So you're still kind of in negotiations through there, right? Well, I still have to wait to be indicted and oh, right now I'm still in pre trial. Okay. So Day Report's just like supervising me until that happens. Right. So basically, between now and sentencing, you just need to walk the line. Right, right yeah. Right. No no dirty urns. Right. Get a job. Keep don't, going to meetings. Don't stuff catch like any that. more things. Right. Yeah. Anything else you can get involved in, too, would help. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know. Oh, hey, I do community service. I do it uh, all. But you dislike people. I don't dislike people, but, like, a lot of people are just hard to be around. Yeah, they're hard to deal with. Yeah. Dude. Everything I do deals with people. Yeah. Tattooing, podcasting, everything. Right. Sometimes I'm not real good with people. Yeah. But I'm getting better, Brittany. <laughs> right. Say, say yay for me. <laughs> right. Uh, <clears throat> I guess practice makes perfect. It does. It does. I concentrate on not being miserable. I concentrate on not being negative, I guess. I, I mean, I don't let people have that much power over me to make me miserable, but if I'm in a work environment and... I just have a hard time not giving what I'm getting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if somebody's being disrespectful, mm -hmm. like, you know. Kind of comes like the expectations, though, right? You treat a certain person a certain right. way, so exactly. you're going to expect them to respect you the right. same ways. Exactly. Uh, I think that's not beyond, you know what I mean? We should be able to do that, right? Hey, right. if I'm nice to you, you should be nice to me. Right. Uh, where I get lost is when I expect people to do things the way I would. I'm always on time. Right. Like, if a person tells you I'm going to do something, I do it. So I hate it when somebody tells me they're going to do something. Just And then flakes out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that fucking just irritates me so bad. Now, I, I, shit comes up, man. People got lives. I totally get that. Right. But it's, it's to the point with a couple of my friends where I just expect them to not be there. 
Oh, oh yeah, I'm coming. So I'm going to do this, bro. And I'm going to do that. We're going to do this. It's going to be so cool. <laughs> and then the day comes. It's going to be great. Right. And then the day comes and they don't even answer the fucking phone. That's upsetting. So now when they tell me it, you know what? I tell them you're a liar. Right. You're not going to be there. Right. You're full of shit. Because the last seven times that you said this, you've, you've been shown full me of that shit. you are not going to be trustworthy. Yeah, so that's why I get expecting people to be who they are. Right. Uh, I put up a video the other day that was uh, talking about past behavior is the best dictator of future behavior. Yeah. Right? And yeah. they're disagreeing with me on on that. And I'm like, how did that, what do you mean it's not? People can change. I'm not saying they can't change. But if someone's always late, you begin to expect them to be late. Absolutely. If someone lies to you, expect them to lie, right? Absolutely. Past behavior of lying makes me think you're a liar now. Past behavior dictates future behavior. Habits are habits, no matter what they are. I just blew my mind that they're actually objecting to that. It's mm. like, that's just the craziest Some thing. Some people just want something to argue about. Don't they? And right. they just want to get in the comments and act a fool. Right, yeah. For no reason. Exactly. Yeah. Mm, haters. Don't be acting fools in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come and get you. Right. So what's the plan from now on, man? Like, what are you, what are you looking forward to now? Like, what's the next thing Brittany's looking forward to? Mm, probably starting school back up. I'm definitely looking forward to getting this court stuff done. And I want to get custody, custody of my son back. So that was my next question. Like, how's things going with him? Great. Great. Right. So good relationship. You just don't have him? I just don't. Yeah. My mom has custody right. of him. But my mom's getting older. She's had a couple strokes. So she's like, Brittany, I'm ready for you to take your son back. Tighten your shit up. Right, girl. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I need so. you to be the daughter I wanted, not the one that's been causing my life. Heckin'. Right, yeah. Because my mom's the same way, dude. Like, yeah. I cause her misery all my life. Yeah. And she's proud of me now, and I love that. There's just something you can look at in their faces that just. Oh, yeah. My mom so tells better. me all the time she's so happy she has her daughter back. Mm hmm. That hurt. That gets you right here, you know? It I mean? does, man. It does. Every time she talks about it, I'm like, Mom. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, you're making me blush. <laughs> no, you're going to make me ball like a baby. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. All of the above. Right. So I got some questions. They're a generous question. We talked about this. You have the option to pass. Okay. Okay. Can I'll I start. phone a friend? Here's a couple pretty stickers. Yeah, right. Final answer. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so that's got the QR code on it, too, so you can just go right in there and uh, with your camera. Okay. And, you know, scan that and it'll send them right to whatever. The whole channel, but your video will be there. Okay. Makes it super easy. Hell yeah. So if I can make this work, because I'm definitely, uh, here we go. I'm doing so good right <laughs> now. All right, here we go. So can you describe how heroin and fentanyl made you feel like when you shot Amazing. up? Amazing. And... Made me feel like nothing in the world could bother me. And it was the end all be all. Yeah. Until you needed another one. Right. Right. Yeah. And until I seen where it was taking me. How long do you think that took? A long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It didn't take it a long time for me, for it to get me horrible places but it took a long time for me to realize this is the cause of it you know what i mean hmm, right yeah make excuses to ourselves right yeah it's not the dog it it's can't be person. the dope. Right, it's that person it's right not me. god it takes forever yes it does especially when you start out young because you just don't really i don't know yeah you're not old enough to understand. Right. Yeah. You, thing, you don't realize what you're losing. And next thing you know, you your whole it. life has been addiction. Right. Yeah. yeah. You wake up in a cold, dark cell. Right. Fuck. Like, how hospital. the fuck did I get here? Right. Yeah. Then you remember. I know how I got here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know then how you I got remember. here. I know. Right. I, I know what got me here, and I'm yeah. fucking cold and sweating. <laughs> right. Like shit. Yeah. yeah. You know exactly what got you here. Um. So, what happened in your active addiction that you regret the most? A lot of things. That's a hard question. Mm -hmm. A lot of things. Uh, uh, losing my son, losing Jimmy, and how I dealt with Jimmy passing with his family and stuff like that. Because mm. I didn't even have the balls to call him and tell him. I, like I, they had to find out from a state trooper coming to their doorstep. Like I didn't. Even, I couldn't even call him and let him know. They found out days later. 
And you had a relationship with him too. Yeah, right? I had a great relationship with him, but I just could not bring myself to do that. I just couldn't. I didn't. How do you how do you approach that situation? You know. God. Never but thought looking about back it now, I regret that I didn't. I regret that I wasn't the one. You know what I mean? Like. Right. Not that it would have made it any better, but I feel like that was my responsibility. Yeah. And I failed at it miserably. Accountability, dude. That's oh, why you're changing. Is yeah. Because you see that shit in right. your heart. Yeah. Facts. Oh, let me see. So what was the worst thing you did to obtain heroin or fentanyl during addiction? Oh, God. Uh, I'm a woman. So probably, like, I wouldn't sell sex, but I would definitely sell, like, pictures and shit. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I was never big on, like, stealing from my family or anything like that, but... Like, you wanted to obtain the money your own ways. Right. Well, you also said you separated yourself from your family, too, huh? Right. But I was also very good at selling other drugs, so... Made it easy you to You know use. what I mean? Yeah. Buy one or buy three and sell two. Right. And get high for free. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. That's how we all start. Yeah. You want to. When you're paying that guy and you see him using it for free. Right. You're like, fuck that, give me five. Right. Yeah. Okay, uh, what would you say is the most important lesson that you learned during active addiction? Mm, to be patient with myself, probably. Okay, you explain. Know? Okay, so it's obviously taken me a long time to get where I'm at right now, and I don't need to think back on it and be hard on myself saying, I could have done this seven, five years ago, three years ago. The point is, is I'm doing it now, and... I'm doing it. Right. You know what I mean? Never too late. Right. Yeah. Right. And you're only a couple months in, man. It yeah. Gets, it, it keeps getting better. I'm going to ask, too, like, uh, how do you feel with this case over your head? You know, you're facing one to ten years. How does that affect your daily? Like, how does that affect your sleep? I try not sleep? to let it affect me. Mm -hmm. I just keep in my mind that as long as I keep doing what I should be doing, I should be all right. Right. God willing. And I'm not a very big God person, but mm -hmm. my higher power willing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So this is what I like to call the time machine question. Okay. You know, if you could go back to one specific spot in your journey and talk to yourself, where would it be in your life? And what would you say? If you would even go back. Oh, I would definitely go back. For sure. Uh, that's a hard question because I feel like if you go, if I go all the way back to when I first started, it would change the people that I met and had in my life. Like Jimmy, I might not have ever met him. You know what I mean? So I don't want to change that aspect, but that's a hard question. It is. Because yeah. it could inevitably change everything. So. And, and you know what I'm starting to get from that question every time is that we all would change the addiction part of it, but we all met people along our journey that we love and cared for. Right. And we don't want to exchange one for the other. No. You know? Because people are, like, people that care about you and that you care about are rare. You know? Right. Especially when you see so many people throughout your lifetime and those few that really right. stand out. Right. Yeah. I can definitely speak, pick the day. That like, you know what I mean? Things went crazy. Right. But again, where would life be if you went back there and told yourself to not do that? that right. Day? The butterfly effect, right? Right. Some people would look at an addicts, look at us, and they're like, why don't you just stop using? Just quit using. Like, just put the needle down. Just stop doing it. Just right. quit. Why is that not just that easy? Because just like everybody else forms habits, like drinking coffee every morning or doing whatever it's just not that easy you don't think it, all addicts probably wish they could do that and even if you can do that you, you're still not solving the bottom line issue you know what i mean which is explain that a little further 
because I'm real fucked up in my head, and I got a lot of issues that I need to work out other than my addiction. You see what I'm saying? Like, right. I just, you, just by stop using, that doesn't mean that, like, you're, you're fixing the problem. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Because you started using because there was a problem. Right. And Most it, of us did, yeah. Right, and it didn't fix it. It just made more problems that we right. snubbed out with more drugs. Right. Yeah. Dry drunk syndrome, I think they call it, yeah. for alcoholics. Yeah. I think that goes across all platforms of drugs. Absolutely. Yeah. Because some people can be total assholes even though they're clean. Right. It's like, bro. Right. Stop being a dick. Yeah. You know, it's like to the point sometimes you just want to be like, get high, man, so that you're not such right. an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Right. Those are the people that especially need to work on it, right? Right. So what would you say your message is to people if Brittany had a mission statement? What would it be? Oh, goodness. Uh, I don't know. Um, don't waste most of your life chasing something that isn't worth it i don't know that's a hard one i'll see where you're going with that though yeah all right take the time you have to be grateful for the things around you right and the people that love and care for you yeah don't waste it in a nod right how much of our lives did we spend in a nod oh a lot and it's really, you think about the nod, if it's an hour long, you only really remember the first 10, 15, 20 right. seconds. And you just wake up groggy. Right. And do it all over again. Swearing that it made you feel great. Right. It's hmm. crazy. It is, man. It's insanity. It is, dude. And I think that's, that's kind of the point of all this is I want people to see that, man. You went through a lot of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To get to this point, you know, like you're living in a car. But I'm here now. Right. You know what I mean? But it's just, uh, if we can help anybody to not go through all that shit, right. man, that's kind of what this is all about. Because yeah. I would rather see anybody not go through it. Get clean, get straight, feel better. Right. Stop chasing that demon. Yeah. Because that's all it is, dude. It's the devil. It is you know the devil. Mean? I you tell everybody the water that boy? it's the devil. Yes, yes, dude. It's the water boy. Yeah. And the drugs are the devil. They are. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Adam Sandler. Love that show. Um, Anything else you want to say before we close out? Mm -mm. that's it yep that's it that's what we're gonna do they're just tattoo yeah you know, hell yeah i've been know. waiting all day for this so what's it gonna say oh god <laughs> oh god i've been debating with myself the whole ride over here right okay so you have you changed it or no we're still going i don't original. know in my opinion it's my body right right so it's gonna say fuck love underneath my butt okay yeah do you really feel that way though like is that is that okay? How you when feel I like... chose the tattoo, I did feel like that. Mm -hmm. Not now, but I don't know what else I'd get there. To be honest with you. Okay. Do and you I'm think... really wanting a tattoo today. Looking so. forward in five years, you think you're going to regret getting a tattoo? See, that that's says, what I've been thinking love. about the whole right, ride well, over just, here. That's kind of like I mean, because we can change it in anything you want, dude. We don't have to write something on you that you know. I haven't even got anything done yet, so we're right on the scratch level. We can right. start anywhere. I thought about doing, like, Satan Center. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So how about uh, social media? Do you want to drop social media where people can find you, message you, follow you, anything like that, or no? Can't I just do that, like, in the comments or some shit? You can do what, that. Would I just say my Facebook name? Sure, if that's where you want to be Brittany able to find Ellen. you. Right, so it's the same as the title. I have your name right. in the title, Brittany yeah. Ellen. So it's under Facebook. Yeah. Sometimes people do reach out, man, and tell you that their story, you know, your story meant something. That's that, cool, yeah. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, to root for you a little bit. And I think that's awesome. I like it when they do that. Yeah. So if you, you know, if you want to get something, you know, I'll, I'll try to link your Facebook. Okay. And if not, y'all can find it in the title. Right. Um, but thanks for coming, man. You're welcome. I'm glad you reached thanks out. Thanks for having me. We'll go in here and bang this tattoo out. Hell yeah. You know? Uh, like, subscribe, and share, man. Y'all know how to do this. Y'all know all them little buttons y'all are supposed to push to help this little channel out, man. Uh, mm. Drop some comments for Brittany. You know, she went through it, man. I was there for a lot of it. Well, not there, but I was... In the background. Yeah, in the background, like, thinking about the shit you were going through, dude. And I'm glad to see you where you are today. Yeah. Facts. Me too. Sweet. All right, y'all. Later. <laughs>